in downtown Avila in the province of Siracusa. We're going to talk to some expats about their life here, their experience here in Sicily. We're also going to go to a pizzeria, but wait until you meet the Sicilian nonna. You're going to love her. She's such a hoot. Enjoy this video. I got these two expats here with me. We're going to talk all about moving here to Sicily and life in Sicily and so much more. Jody De Luca, Anthony Campanella. Ciao. 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 All right, let's start with you, Jody. Uh, okay. What made you move to Sicily? When I came here in 2016, as soon as my feet hit the ground, I was vibrating with this is home. And came back in 2017 to confirm if that was still accurate, and it was definitely so. And at that point, I just started making the plans to get my dual citizenship, to move here, make this my home for retirement. And this is a place of all the places I've traveled in the world where I feel more at home than I have ever felt anywhere. What have been some of the biggest challenges for you? Some of the biggest challenges really have been around the bureaucracy of the documentation and for requirements for the dual citizenship. But all definitely achievable and overcomable is just going through the process and being patient. <laughs> what do you miss the most about the United States besides, of course, family? Oh, wow. Um, it's hard to actually say. It would probably be more food related. You know, um, specialty things, you know, like different Asian foods or Mexican food, because I was in California, or Cuban food from being in Florida, but those are not important. My friends and family, I miss the most. All right, now we're going to go to Anthony's farm. Check this out. Okay, so Pietra Perzia, and what's the other town outside Cast of Messina? Castanea delle Forie, and that's where my father's family was from. Mother's family was from Pieta Pazia, father's family was from Castanea della Furia. And when did you decide to move here? 1962, when I was <laughs> born. <laughs> um, and, and it was always a pipe dream. Um, and then um, I spent 1988, 1989 in the Marine Corps out in the Mediterranean and just fell in love with the climate, the people, the food, just the quality of life, the, the pace of life, and it became a little more of a pipe dream. And then one day I went up to Lawrence, Massachusetts to a little store called All Things Sicilian. Alfred. Alfred's <laughs> store. And I bought a book called Many Beautiful Things by Vincent Chiaravelli, who's an American actor who ended up moving back to Sicily to his grandparents' hometown, Polizia Generosa. And clearly he had more money than I have, um, but he was able to seamlessly assimilate into Sicilian life and just the joy of going back home. And that's when I finally decided to put the plans in motion that I would actually do this when I retired. So, And you did it. And I did it. Say la vie, here I am. So this is the farm. This is the farm. We have 150 trees here. You name it, I've got it. From figs to apples to pears to cherries to apricots to, uh, what do we got else? We have Kale. Melicotonia, um, which is quince. Um, I've got pomegranates, I've got oranges, I got mandarins, I got lemons, I have limes, I have kiwi, I have everything. I, I, I can't even name it. I have carobs. Um, Were you a farmer back in Boston? Clearly not. <laughs> <laughs> what made you buy this? Uh, Signora Giovanna. She no, but why me. did you, why she was, threatened no, you? <laughs> no, seriously, I was not looking for a farm, wasn't interested in a farm, had no plans on buying a farm. My friend Karen asked me to come up here and look at this place because she knew I knew people and said, maybe you know somebody who's interested in it. We walked up here and within two minutes I said, yeah, I know somebody who's interested. So <laughs> that was it. I bought it the next month. And, and how is it being a gentleman farmer here in Sicily? Uh, other than the fact that I'm not an expert and everybody else is an expert and everybody else has, every expert has their own opinion and I'm an idiot for whatever I do, uh, I'm loving it. I absolutely love it. Nothing, nothing fills my day with more fun than doing coming up here and I don't know what I do here, but whatever I do here, I'm having fun. <laughs> here. There's a Bafana here to scare off any bird that would even think of eating a fig. <laughs> No figs yet. No figs yet. Yeah. Well, we did a pretty massive cut job on everything this year, so hopefully soon we'll start to what see is some like this. This is a zaba, and it's they look like small crab apples, 
and I'm not even sure how you prepare them or what you're supposed to do. I know you can't just take them off the tree and eat them. You're supposed to take them off the tree, dry them, maybe, steam them. Make a jam. Make jam? a jam? I have no idea. I Because nobody seems to know. Every time I ask somebody about them, they're like, oh, yeah, my grandmother had that, but I forget what she used to do. <laughs> a lot of work keeping this up. Yeah, it's, it is, but it's not as much as I thought. It's, it's in more, sometimes it's more and sometimes it's less, but, um, you know, you lose track of time when you're up here anyway, so it doesn't No matter. kidding. <laughs> yes, please. I'm lemon girl. I'll take a few lemons. Alrighty. Lemons here are so different than the lemons by us. And nothing like picking your own lemon. Okay. So I, the one thing I did do here is to automate all the irrigation. So I've got all these sprinkler systems that are all set on timers so that I can water my fruit trees and vegetables at the appropriate time and in sequence that they need to be done. So that's probably the major thing that I've done here. That's that you, the, that's the military man in you. Yeah. Tell me. In addition to all of everything I got here, there's a beautiful outdoor kitchen area over here with a barbecue. Oh, and a, I saw. And a forno leño. I've seen you make pizza online. Yes. <laughs> and then I've got a beautiful one. That is so cool. For la pizza. For la pizza. And of course, this view. Yes. Cava grande. And it's always sunny here, despite what Jody says. <laughs> <laughs> After these two, no more. No more Americans. <laughs> Ruining Sicily here. <laughs> okay, so since I've gotten here, I've been doing a lot of genealogical research. And I've been going to the archives in Messina, the archives in Anna, the comunes of the various small towns that my ancestors are from, and also to a uh, Mormon chapel up in Syracuse because the Mormons are very famous for having cataloged all of the birth records worldwide and having them on microfiche and microfilm. So I've been able to go back fairly far and the other day I was able to find the marriage certificate of my five times great-grandparents from 1739 wow. in Pietro Pizzia. That's Chiesa unbelievable. Madre. And uh, from there, I was able to get the names of both sets of parents. So I was able to identify my six times great grandparents. So now I'll, with that information, I'll start to look back and see if I can't find their marriage certificate or their birth certificates. Uh, I'll probably hitting the end of the road because the records of Pietro Pizzia go back to right around. Why'd 17th. you pick Avila? I picked Avila because my my criteria was ten minutes to the beach and an hour to the airport. Um, and obviously the, this zone here is beautiful. I, I had visited Syracuse and Noto a couple of times um, in the 2000s and actually 1993 we came as well. So I've been here and I know the area well and I, I kind of really like the people. I like the, the quaintness of it. I love the fact that I'm so close to the beach. Uh, even though last year I didn't get to the beach at all. Hopefully this year we will. Um, and it's just a, a beautiful zone, beautiful area, and it's, and it's less expensive than areas north of Catania, which also would have met my criteria. But sono un povero contadino, so <laughs> I have to stay down this end. This lovely woman is Giovanna. She's the queen of Avola, right? La regina di Avola. sono. Non sono bella. Yeah, no, sei bellissima. 83 years old. She lives in this beautiful house. And we are visiting with her, and she insisted that we have some biscotti. Ora vi mangiate un biscottino. E vi do un liquore che l'ho fatto io. Ah, le cordacce. Sì. Oh. Fatto mio. Ah, sì. Le sì. cuore da de... montagna? Mottilla, sì. Sì. Mottilla. Anche a Mottilla c'è la montagna, ma però non c'è ancora, non Very. lo so. Ah. Oh. E... Her mother okay. made her get married to a man that she didn't want to, so she's angry no, at her no. mom. 83 years old, look at her. Sharp as can be. So she makes her own soap out of olive oil. <laughs> Let's see this. Your other soap is a bianco. All white soap that she made from olive oil. I've seen all the soap. I'm going to try this. I've seen all the soap. Five kilo, five euro. Yes. This is one kilo. This is ten euro. This is one kilo. 
sei brava si mosaico è lavorato questo è un chilo prendi questo che è meglio Mm. She goes around in her car and sells these. Io mi faccio anche a doccia con questo. Ah, sì? Sì, a doccia, a doccia. She takes a shower with this. Sì, 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 sì. Tutta mi faccio a doccia, tutta mi sapono con questo. And look how beautiful her skin is. Sì, 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 sì. La bella pelle. Sì, 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 io a doccia mi faccio. E c'ho sapone da bagno. This is where she makes the soap. Questo mette a terra, questo. Ah. Quei legni, quei legni, lì ci sono i legni, vedi, vedi, lì ci sono i legni. Ah, there's sì. the wood. Sì, 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 qua, qua. And she faccio. boils it. Qua, qua. With olive oil. Sì. È lavorato, lavorato. A lot of work, she says. Lavorato, lavorato. Ai, ai. There you go. Soap made out of olive oil. Ooh. Soft. Oh, it's nice. That's nice soap. <laughs> Smells good. <laughs> Little Dotty, you got to bring your cat with you to Sicily, right? That Absolutely. was fun. What's the best part about living here in Sicily? The best part about living here in Sicily is just all the beauty, the nature, whether it's just you know the sun, the sky, the mountains, the you know the landscape and all of the flora and fauna, or you know just. The oceans and the lakes, they're just beauty everywhere. We had a great time wandering around the Cava Grande and all that the... Was, getting lost is so much fun. I love doing that. Exploring and learning new places, discovering. I love discovering. The most difficult part in moving here to Sicily. Not just the bureaucracy, sure. the paperwork that you just have to go through, of course. Uh, actually, I, there was not. I mean, I literally got off the ground. I was lucky to have my cousin Filippo in Pietro Pazia to welcome me. He had bought a car that I was able to drive from day one. Um, so that was easy. And uh, getting into a house, he had already had a house rented for me for three months. Didn't have to worry about that. Um, I had traveled extensively throughout the world. So I was used to coming into places and assimilating with the local culture, the local food. Yeah. Um, and As a Marine, you <laughs> traveled a lot. I've traveled a lot. So um, to me, it really wasn't anything. And, and I think maybe you've seen the picture of what I packed to come here. I literally came here with one sea bag, one suit bag, and a carry-on bag. And I started my life fresh when I hit the ground. Okay, Jody. besides bureaucracy, what was the most difficult thing for you? Probably the travel itself. Um, initially, I too blessed with the fact that in 2019, I discovered I had cousins in Librizzi, my ancestral hometown. I had never, no idea that they were there. And they have been the most gracious, generous, wonderful, supportive, helpful people to get me through the bureaucracy and so on. But the traveling itself, I had torn in my meniscus right before I left the States and traveling with a cat and seven pieces of luggage. <laughs> <laughs> but in terms of living in Librizzi, it's mountain a, town. It's a mountain <laughs> the town. Of nowhere. Um, beautiful coastal mountain town with the view of the Thranian Sea. Yeah. Um, lovely town, but my entire life since birth, I've lived at sea level. That's been an adjustment. And I have learned that I am not a mountain girl <laughs> at all. You know, the winds are yeah, oh, outrageous, those winds. And you know, so the weather in the mountains is definitely different than the weather at the sea level. <laughs> so that's been a All right, so you have pizza named after you, and now you're even making olive oil in your name? Yes, well, I call it Eredita, which is heritage or legacy. So it's a, it's an homage to my grandparents. So I, I make the olive oil. Last year we had about 140 liters of olive oil. This year we had a little bit less. Uh, I give it all away for free. So I eat what I eat and anything else I just, I just give what it What a away. man, what a man. No, no. Hey, what's your favorite part about living here in Sicily? Everything. The food, the people, the weather. Um, I, there's, not a, there's not a bad thing to be said about living here at all. Anthony even has a pizza named after him, Campanella, pomodoro, mozzarella, salsiccia, pepperoni. Anthony, six euro for your pizza? Hey, I'm a classy guy. <laughs> <laughs> or every time he sells one. <laughs> We're in Sicilia bed, uh, and these are 
The choice is for pizza. Questa insalata? Insalata, come si chiama? Mista, mista. No, questa con pancetta. Con pancetta. Aspetta, guarda quando la, fin la finiamo. Look at that, what they Ancora non è finita, aspetta, la vedete quando è finita del piatto. Rosario. There's a pizza oven. Cipolla. C'è triolli. He's a professionist, look at that. Sale, origano, origano da dove? Di qua, di nostro. Origano nostro, olio d'oliva. Certo. Certo. Bianco o? Bianco o nero, nero c'è sul tavolo. Qua c'è bianco. Buono! Sto a posto basta. A posto basta. Ma poi dopo facciamo la tua. Peperoni allora. freschi, eh? Peperoni freschi e poi salsiccia. Fresca, cipolla. Ok, onions. E poi, come chiama? Come signora, come si chiama? Campanella. Campanella. Lui, la sua pizza, lui l'ha messo là. Quanto maggio? Mozzarella. Solo mozzarella. E l'altra. Onion, sausage, Cibola. pepper, cheese. E basta. Ah, now the pizza goes in. Siamo? Siamo. Ora, 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 vieni qua e ne fai with the fresh tuna. Va bene, va bene, right? Nutella, sì, bro. Questa pizza? No. Questa pizza Nutella non è pizza. Non è pizza. È una specialità da avola? Avola, sì. Specialty of avola. Questa mandorla? Mandorla. Dessert pizza, there you go. Bellissimo Sebastiano. So you lived in Nishemi? Yeah, I lived in Nishemi and I didn't speak Italian before I went to Nishemi. So I learned my initial Italian when I was living in Nishemi. And I came here and people couldn't understand what I was saying. And I thought, I must be so stupid. I thought I'd learn what to say. And then there was a program on the television and it was somebody from Nia Nishemi who was speaking and I understood every single word that he was saying and I realized it's because I was used to the accent that they have in Nishemi and obviously I was also replicating that accent when I was speaking Italian and so people in the shops here didn't understand me. That's the accent, they all speak different. Yeah. And by you, everyone speaks Sicilian, huh? Yes, yes. We, I have come to an agreement with my, my neighbors. I will speak Italian and they will understand everything I say. They will speak Sicilian and I will understand nothing. So, <laughs> yeah. it works out really well. And Jody, by you? <laughs> Everybody there seems to speak a version of Italian and also Lubriziese. Of course, everyone has their dialect language. And so my cousins have started to teach me a few words here and there that are more Lubriziese versus Italian, because I won't even say Sicilian. <laughs> so, but I'm far from being fluent in any of them. Well, you're fluent in Spanish. Moment. It'll take some time. This is true. <laughs> My brain will stop Pazienza, pazienza. What are you having? So I'm having a tuna e cipolla. Tuna and onion. A, a pizza that I would never think of buying in the United States. And I see it on the menus here all the time and I never would have thought of buying it here either. Except when I had a, there was a birthday party for the elderly woman across the street from me and they had a pizza. And then the son-in-law had just loaded a bunch of things on my plate, including a tuna and onion pizza. And it was the most amazing pizza I've ever eaten in my life. And now it's one of my go-to pizzas. Buon appetito. And here's the campanella. Tinkerbell pizza. This is the Tinkerbell pizza. 
<laughs> very happy. This is, I've been waiting for this for months to get here and have this. You know what? You can't beat a tea olive oil. And your grandparents? This is my grandmother and her brothers and sisters at my Uncle Joe's wedding. So this is probably, was this? this was in Massachusetts, so this was probably in 19... Uh, 45, 50, somewhere around there. There are my grandparents. That's also in Everett, Massachusetts. And the kitchen, and look at that, entering Boston. Yes. Can't take the Boston out of you. No. Draws open. My mother was at hungry draws. Must be closed. <laughs> and, and, and there's a woman in town who this house used to belong to her aunt, and she yells at me every time she sees something on Facebook because I still have this kitchen that her mother bought in 1981. Oh. Now this is nice. <laughs> Beautiful. This is my summer bedroom. I sleep, up here, I sleep up here all summer long. <laughs> it's beautiful. Look at that view of the water. Spectacular. What's that over there? Is that a school? Uh, police, station. police station. Police station. Perfect for you, Anthony. Exactly. <laughs> Biggest advice to people moving here. Do your research and your homework before you get here. Come here several times. Go north, south, east, west. Find a place that feels good to you. Make sure you know what you want to have as your environment to live in. I wanted to be close to an airport. I wanted to have reasonable access to health care. I wanted to be by the sea. I worked in the wine industry in California. I wanted to be near wine here. So those are just, you know, like short list things. And, but just know what you want before you get here. Do the research and find out what towns meet those criterion for you. Great advice. Wait a sec, I gotta ask yeah, you. I was waiting, I was waiting. <laughs> Who's Boston? I'm gonna call him Boston. <laughs> He drives like a Bostonian. Wait till you get in the car with him. All right, what do you miss the boat? Uh, Aside from family and friends, um, I think mainly is, as Jody said, some of the ethnic cuisine that's readily available in the United States. Uh, I miss live sports and uh, participating in sports because I'm a hockey player and I've played hockey my whole life and there is no ice in Sicily. Well, now, well, now you're farming. Now I'm a farmer. Now you're, you're, but you can't your, skate on that. That's your sport. <laughs> <laughs> that is true. Any final words? La vita è bella. That's it. <laughs> <laughs> worth the move? Definitely worth the move. Worth Highly the move? Absolutely. Oh, left. Oh, can you? I see which way. Except for the driving, of course. Oh. <laughs> All right, guys. Final word, because Alfred always has something final to say. So final word, ladies first. If you have any inkling that you want to do this for your life, to make this move, don't hesitate. You only do what it once. takes. Enjoy life. Life is meant to be lived to its fullest. Good one. Okay, Boston. Unless you're a jerk, because we have <laughs> enough here. And we only, we, if you're going to come, be adaptable. Don't expect everything to be what it was in the United States. Expect the unexpected. Expect the unexpected and roll with it. Roll with it. Roll with it. It's all good. All right, hope you enjoyed this video of you, me, and Sicily. Please make sure to hit the like, share it with a friend, and we'll see you with Alfred on another episode of You, Me, and Sicily. Arrivederci. Ciao. Ciao. <laughs> okay, so tell me the story about the lime. Okay, so this is a margarita in training right here. <laughs> so, so two years ago, I bought two lime trees. I bought this lime tree right here, which looks dead and dying. And this lime tree here, which li looks lively. So the interesting story is the very first year, the lime tree that's dead here was beautiful. The lime tree that's dead over there looked like this. It had beautiful leaves on it, and it started to pop a bunch of limes on it. And this tree was barren and had nothing. So I was cursing this tree out, calling it a lazy son of a bitch, <laughs> and praising that tree. Well, and now look what happened. I learned my lesson that when you talk have, nicely to the plants. Exactly. But when you have a lime tree or a young fruit tree, the first two years, you don't want it to fruit at all. And anytime you see fruit, you should remove the fruit so that the tree can give the energy into growing a strong root system and growing a strong base and strong leaves, not the fruits. So I actually 
probably ended up killing that tree over there. There you go, ladies and gentlemen. Not. Some farming <laughs> tips from our friend Anthony, only on Yumi and Sicily. <laughs> Broccoli. They look great. I'll take a few. All right. Look at that kale. You know, somebody knows what they're doing is probably looking at me cutting this broccoli and saying, what the heck is he doing? <laughs> it's your farm. Do what you want. That's not the way you cut broccoli. 